Today we start our awareness campaign about the citywide ban in both Huntsville and Madison meant to discourage texting while driving. We've said repeatedly, when you wear a seat belt, when you don't wear a seat belt, you put your life at risk. When you text while driving, you put everyone's life at risk. Uh, in 2008, more than 6,000 people were killed due to driver distraction and inattention. More than half a million people were injured. Our Eyes on the Road Huntsville policy on text messaging while driving vehicles will not only help save lives and reduce injuries, but will make our roads safer. Our work on this effort began in February with an internal policy that banned city employees from texting while driving. Then in July, our city council passed a citywide ordinance that would encourage our residents to keep their eyes on the road and off their phones. And I've got to say that the city council came through with unanimous support on this issue. Now that ordinance goes into effect on Monday, September 20th. You might see the sign behind us here. The billboards which you see behind us were donated at no cost to the city by Lamar Advertising. Both our website and TV channels will be focusing on the message to don't text and drive. I'd like to hand it over now to Paul Finley who has been a partner in this as their community has also passed a texting ban which will take effect soon. And right after that, Dave Hargrove will come up and speak, who is the Regional Director for AT&T Alabama, who along with Lamar have also been terrific partners in this effort. It has been a, a partnership with Huntsville as we continue again from an awareness standpoint to make sure we realize what we can do to make an impact in safety. And I commend our council because one of the key components they had uh, is as they looked to do this was one, to support the city of Huntsville, and two, do it in a way that didn't cause confusion between our two cities. Someone has, shouldn't have to wonder when they get to a city, what's the difference in these two ordinances? So in our case, we mirrored what they did. Council fully supported this, and in turn, ours will go into effect the same time that Huntsville's does. Um, I, I want to thank Dave and AT&T for kind of leading the charge on this. Uh, and, and lastly, I want to say this. We've had some folks say, well, people will still do it. And I said, you know, and, and people will still sometimes speed, but, but, but the reality of it is when you make it a law and you say don't do it, it's illegal to do it, most folks will conform to that. But more importantly in talking to our driver's ed teachers at, at, at Bob Jones High School and the students that are in that class right now, the fact that we can teach this at that level starting, you know, from, from when they learn how to drive and they know it's illegal to do this, most of the time they will conform to that and it will make a difference in safety for, for, for not only them, but as, as Mayor Battle said, for those who, are, who would be impacted negatively were they to do it and cause a problem. So I want to again commend our council for, for, for passing this uh, and I appreciate Huntsville for leading the charge and we in turn look forward. It will change my habits. It will change many people's habits for the positive. They have really done a lot to heighten awareness about what has emerged as one of the most significant public safety issues facing us right now. Currently, and I won't bombard you with statistics, but just to give you an idea of what the scope of what we're talking about is, there are more than 280 million wireless subscribers in the United States. In the second quarter of this year, more than 154 billion text messages crossed our network, AT&T's, and that's just our network. That's a 43% increase from the same time a year ago. Our network currently handles more than 87,000 text messages every five seconds. Our society is rapidly transitioning from cell phones to smartphones, meaning we'll have access to the internet in the palm of our hand just about anywhere we frequent. But just because we can text just about everywhere doesn't mean we should. And that's why the company I work for is leading a nationwide campaign to educate all wireless users, especially teens, that there is a smart way to text, and it's a very simple message. When it comes to texting and driving, it can wait. Most of the messages sent on these wireless devices, I think we'll all agree, they really don't carry the degree of urgency that warrant the risk of taking your eyes off the road, even for what we think is just a second. We're also encouraging everyone, and this is often forgotten, not to facilitate someone else texting while driving. In other words, don't send a text to someone if you know they're probably going to be behind the wheel at the time, and I've been guilty of that in the past. 
I've heard our mayors and council members and chiefs say these ordinances aren't about seeing how many people our law enforcement officers can pull over in sight. To repeat, this really is about recognizing that texting in particular is statistically a very dangerous activity behind the wheel. And we all need to change our behavior because it really can wait. Thank you again. We've already put it out to our officers about what we want and how we want them to perform it. It is a secondary violation. Obviously, you can't be pulled over if that's the only violation you're committing. Oftentimes, when people text, they commit other violations. Uh, when we find someone texting while driving and they have committed another violation, we're going to cite them for both violations, the primary as well as the secondary of texting while driving under this ordinance.